This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Three people are due in a Madison courtroom September 19th to face felony charges connected to the 2020 fake presidential electors scheme in Wisconsin. State Attorney General Josh Call suggests more people could still be charged. I'm not going to comment on specific individuals, but what I can say is that this this is an ongoing investigation and our decisions are going to be based on those facts and what the best interests of justice show. Call says the decision to charge now has nothing to do with this year's election. The decisions we make are, are not based on external factors like the ones you mentioned. They're, they're based on our judgment about how we can most effectively uh, pursue the interests of justice in this case. Kenneth Chesbro, Jim Trupas, and Mike Roman are due in a Madison courtroom on September 19th. Four Democratic and 22 Republican incumbents in the Wisconsin Assembly will face primary challengers under new district maps. That's according to an analysis by WISP Politics. The Republicans facing primary challengers include Assembly Speaker Robin Voss and Joint Finance Committee co-chair Mark Bourne. Democrats are running candidates in all 16 state Senate races in November and 97 of 99 Assembly seats. Republicans turned in papers in 11 Senate seats and 84 Assembly districts. The National Weather Service now confirms an EF-1 tornado touched down east of Mount Horeb May 21st. There's no word as to why the confirmation took so long. The latest twister is the 24th to hit Wisconsin so far this year. Local leaders in Wisconsin support tighter emission standards for vehicles in the U.S. starting in two years. Pamela Guthman is a member of the Chippewa County Board and a registered nurse. These EPA standards are necessary to decrease the harmful particulate matter to save lives of our children, grandchildren, and community members right here in Eau Claire and throughout Wisconsin. The new EPA standards for cars and light trucks start with model year 2027. Portraits and classic films featuring Smokey the Bear will be on display in Rhinelander the first week in July. The collection of original artwork by Smokey's artist Rudolph Wendelin comes from the USDA archives in Washington, D.C. It's part of National Forest Week celebrations in northern Wisconsin. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Chippewa Falls YMCA is looking for volunteers to join its summer veteran fishing series. According to a WEAU report, the organization has been planning the event since last summer and has received a great deal of interest from the community. The program will include volunteers taking veterans from the Wisconsin Veterans Home in Chippewa Falls out to Erickson Park for a series of fishing events over the summer. At the end of the event, the YMCA will host a fish fry to cook up all of the fish caught by the veterans over the summer. The Wisconsin Army National Guard is in Chippewa Falls this week supporting renovations at the American Legion Post 77. The National Guard is expected to work through Thursday before other contractors take over to finish the renovations, saving the American Legion about $15,000 in demolition work. According to a WEAU report, the National Guard is volunteering their time and equipment through a Department of Defense program called Innovative Readiness Training. Work should run through June 14th. The Eau Claire Area School District Board has unanimously approved an $18 million annual referendum for the November election. The referendum would provide the school district with $18 million in funding each year for the next four years to ensure stability of educational programs, add behavioral and mental health resources for students, improve school safety, and sustain its current student-to-staff ratio. A number of other school districts could propose similar resolutions for consideration on the November ballot. The driver of the school bus that crashed near Hudson in April while carrying DeLong Middle School students has been charged. According to court documents, the driver of the bus was charged with unauthorized operation of a school bus. The April 25th crash involved the bus rear-ending another vehicle after traffic slowed suddenly on the St. Croix River Bridge due to construction work, resulting in some minor injuries to six people on the bus. The bus was carrying the students for a field trip to the Orpheum Theater. The Eau Claire Plan Commission unanimously approved an application to rezone the Regency Inn and Suites from a residential property to a commercial property. The application came from the expected new owners, who entered a purchasing agreement in recent weeks and intend to close the sale next month. They are planning a full renovation for the location, hoping to eradicate any negative associations the location has developed. The rezoning must still be approved by the City Council, which will meet on June 10th. 
An Eau Claire area brewery that closed in October has announced it will reopen at a new location on the south side. According to a Facebook post, Modicum Brewing has announced it will take over the K-Point Brewing location on Southtown Drive in Eau Claire. The brewery had previously planned to relocate from Altoona to the Artisan Forge building, but scrapped that plan due to construction timelines and regulatory hurdles. According to the Facebook post, Modicum Brewing is planning a relaunch party on July 9th. Construction work in downtown Eau Claire is set to kick up as crews begin to work on residential housing above the new transit center. According to a WEAU report, construction on the transit center has essentially been finished, and construction on the housing aspect of the project should get fully underway in a couple of weeks. When completed, the housing development will feature 88 units, with about half of them being considered workforce housing, suitable for workers making just below the county's medium income. A downtown Chippewa Falls business was unexpectedly boarded up on Tuesday morning. According to a Facebook post, Iris Boutique on North Bridge Street suffered serious damage when an apartment above the store collapsed and caved into the back of the shop. The damage was so severe that the front windows of the boutique had been blown out entirely in addition to the damage caused by the falling apartment. Nobody was in the shop at the time of the collapse and the apartment upstairs was vacant. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Philadelphia Phillies defeat the Milwaukee Brewers in extra innings. For Civic Media Sports, I'm Jimmy Kuska. It took 10 innings, but Philadelphia was able to defeat the Brewers 2-1 to one thanks to this walk-off hit in the 10th inning. Line drive Game, to baby. Right field. He is the hero! A one-hop off the wall! Here comes Merrifield, and the Phils will win it! In the bottom of the 10th inning, Nick Castellanos... An RBI double, two to one, Phils. That call courtesy of NBC Sports Philadelphia. Manager Pat Murphy said that the Brewers had their opportunities but couldn't get the big hit in a tough loss. We had opportunities. We didn't get the ball in the air one time. We didn't make contact in the outfield a couple times. And, uh, you know, we had opportunities to take the lead. The Brewers and Phillies wrap up their three-game series this afternoon as Milwaukee tries to avoid the sweep. The Green Bay Packers offseason workouts continue. Head coach Matt LaFleur says the team right now has a good vibe going about it as they get ready for the 2024 season. I'm really pleased with kind of where we're at right now um, in terms of not only the the cohesion on the field but also off the field. I think every time we step in the meeting rooms there's been great energy great interaction with the guys i think that's part of the process is is just how we can come together and i think that's a great part of the offseason quarterback jordan love says that the offseason workouts have been productive and that the team is in a great spot right now just having everybody here right now at this time is is very cool because you just build those relationships and get closer with guys and get to go out there and work and compete with them every day so um, i think this team's in an awesome spot right now for civic media sports i'm jimmy Kuska. on your entertainment beat i'm pete schwaba Insights into Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez's troubles have really ramped up. People.com says an exclusive source, whatever that means, said the couple supposedly on the outs attended Affleck's son's basketball game, adding that it's an encouraging sign. After the game, however, Lopez was later seen at the grocery store, but without coupons. One fellow shopper who was waiting to buy lottery tickets and prepared to use a personal check thought the look on Lopez's face indicated she missed Ben. Later that evening, the power couple attended an all-you-can-eat buffet at Golden Corral, where Affleck barely touched his salad, which was comprised mostly of croutons, according to one hefty eater on his way back for a third helping. We'll keep you posted if we hear more from random sources. Bad Boys 4, semicolon, yes, 4, hits theaters June 6th. The film stars once-likable actors Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. The story is predictable and cliche, and I give it two thumbs down. I will give more details after I see the film. In already a famous actor but need even more attention news, Alec Baldwin has announced that he and his wife, Hilaria, will be front and center on a new reality show with their seven kids. The controversial 67-year-old actor and his 40-year-old wife are opening their home to camera crews from TLC for some reality. The show will be called The Baldwins. Most of these reality shows are pretty scripted, but if Baldwin punches one of the cameramen, we'll know it's real. Compared to other streaming services, HBO is still a decent deal with pretty good programming. Because of that, they will raise their prices for ad-free entertainment like other platforms. Warner Brothers Discovery says they will bump the price by $1 a month to $16.99 for programming without commercials. There are a ton of other plans you can choose from on HBO, and one is more confusing than the next. 
Sometimes passion for one's art is so pure, even a life-threatening car accident can't keep one from their dreams. Actress and native Wisconsinite Marissa Bodie is set to make her feature film debut in the motion picture Wicked, based on the Broadway play. Bodie hails from Mazomany, Wisconsin. She has been acting since she was eight years old and got her start in a Madison Children's Theater. In 2011, she was involved in a life-altering car accident on the way to rehearsal, leaving her paralyzed from the waist down. But the incident did not keep Bodie down. She went on to earn a theater degree in college. Wicked is told from the point of view of the Wicked Witch in The Wizard of Oz. Bodhi plays Nessa Rose, the witch's younger sister. Part one of the film will hit theaters in November of this year. Part two is scheduled to hit theaters in November of 2025. Not only did Bodhi overcome incredible odds and land a role in a major motion picture, this is her feature film debut. Way to go, Marissa. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Wamba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Breezy winds out of the west today will whip up to 30 miles per hour, pulling our high temperatures to the upper 70s. As we sit pretty under sunny skies, a few more showers and a stray thunderstorm do pop up again this afternoon. I'm meteorologist Brittany Merlot. Right now, it's 62 degrees. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.